Welcome to the Spiritual Unity Radio Network, a station dedicated to the concept that all manifestations of the divine are equally valid. Join Reverend Terry Power HP, Robin McKean, and all the hosts for programming covering a wide range of spiritual topics right here on Blog Talk Radio. Invictus and Athena Victory celebrates the mythic impulses of ancient Greece and Rome, and they invite you to celebrate with them. Welcome to Voice of Olympus. Greetings and welcome to Voice of Olympus. This is Hercules Invictus, your host, and tonight I am flying solo. We have a wonderful episode planned uh, tonight. We're going to start with Michael and Diane Duncan from California, and uh, they are going to be updating us on the very exciting sixth revelation that they are bringing to the world. (laughs) Greetings, Michael and Diane. Greetings, Hercules, fellow Argonauts. (laughs) Greetings. Thank you for that lovely introduction. (laughs) Well, you're lovely people, so you deserve a lovely introduction. And uh, I'm very uh, uh, excited about all the things that are happening there uh, in California. It's amazing uh, how quickly uh, your revelations are unfolding and how fast things are happening. Oh, it's so true. Yes, it's a daily adventure. Uh, It's a daily Argonaut adventure. Um, Thank you again, Hercules, for having us on. We really appreciate uh, you giving us an opportunity to share some of our ideas and share some of the preliminary information coming out about uh, the Sixth Revelation, the Father's Ten-Year Plan, and the Magisterial Mission. I just wanted to tell everybody uh, who may not uh, know us that um, we are involved right now in the Urantia book movement. Um, We read the Urantia book. We study it. Um, I was president of Urantia book Los Angeles Society out here in the Los Angeles area and Orange County area for two years. Um, Before that, I was the education chair for uh, Urantia book Los Angeles Society. And my wife is um, a past member of the governing committee and hospitality chair for UBLA. For four years. For four years. Wow. <laughs> um, but besides uh, our involvement in the Uranch, with the Urantia book and in the Urantia book community, we are also theosophists. Uh, we're also Rosicrucians. We are involved with, um, we're members of the Tao, which is Maitreya Great Tao, which comes out of, uh, originally came out of China and Taiwan now, is the headquarters Mm -hmm. of Taiwan. Uh, But we've also been involved with Church Universal and Triumphant with Elizabeth Clare Prophet. Um, We are, um, you know, involved with uh, the, uh, with neo-theosophy also, with, uh, you know, the new ideas that have come out from Benjamin Krem and other things mm-hmm. like that in the Theosophical movement. Um, I also I have a music degree from UC Irvine out here, um, sister school kind of to UCLA and UC Berkeley. But uh, I have a music degree from UC Irvine, and my second job is singing in a beautiful basilica church, a Catholic basilica church, um, next to the Mission San Juan Capistrano in San Juan Capistrano, California. We, uh, we live in Mission Viejo, California, and we have a beautiful home here in the suburbs, which is now um, a 
headquarters for the world that the local universe father, local universe mother, the infinite mother spirit, uh, Melchizedek's magisterial son are working through, and we'll tell you a little bit more about that uh, as we go on. Very awesome. And Diane, how about you? What are your accomplishments in uh, your biography? Oh, my goodness. Well, um, I started out as a folk singer, I'm afraid, <laughs> um, oh, <wow>. back um, <laughs> in the 60s, even as a teenager, I was singing at the Chandelier and the Ronde Rue in Long Beach, and I, I would uh, see Bobby Darren come in and do his Mac mm-hmm. the Knife, you know, <laughs> on the nights I was singing, he'd come in just for fun, you know, and uh, I learned all the old standards there, uh, the Chandelier mainly. And then I um, went to Colorado, and I did folk singing in uh, to the Air Force Academy. I sang there for about six months and then to Air Force Base, and I sang at the Dublin House. Uh, I'm Irish, and so I did Irish folk songs there. I did uh, quite a bit of work in um, Denver, uh, singing at the Aviation Country Club, Denver Country Club, uh, the different country clubs there, and um, did some television and some radio. So I really was a singer. Um, Michael is a singer, and so when we got together, um, we did some gigs at the Balboa Bay Club down here in uh, California, in Newport Beach, and also uh, doing other jobs. And so uh, that was my early career with singing. <laughs> well, you guys have had an exciting life uh, and, and a very varied and rich life. That is awesome. <laughs> um, I also am an artist, and uh, uh, my my painting really goes back to high school, but uh, in college is where I started to really get into painting um, uh, things of uh, archaeology, um, Egyptian and Greek uh, uh, motifs, and uh, so that uh, really has uh, been one of my main focuses is my painting also. <laughs> and you have a varied uh, a varied uh, spiritual background uh, as well as Michael, and uh, oh, well, you have a you. long thank journey you. that you've taken uh, as well. Would you care to share that with the listeners? Oh, of course. Um when I was very young, we, we had a very wonderful family friend, and his name was uh, Mr. Blessing, William Blessing. And if you Google William Blessing, you might be able to find out a little bit about him. But he was our dear family friend in Colorado, where I was born and then eventually went back to. I, I grew up in California. But um, this, this family friend, Mr. Blessing, was the one that particularly took my... Um, uh, interest. Uh, he considered me as his little girl <laughs> and hmm. taught me all the things that, that he learned. He was a Baptist minister at first, but uh, he was also uh, in the Masonic. And I would sing for the Masonic um, de, de Malay, uh, uh Function. functions that they would have, but he would teach me all the things that now I realize um, were coming out of the Rosicrucian uh, teachings and theosophy and all these other wonderful things from the Arantia book. And so for many, many years, um, he produced the Showers of Blessing, a magazine, and he wrote books. And uh, he gave me that that early um, upbringing of things that I, I never dreamed of, uh, I could never have learned. I, I went to Sunday school in a regular Christian church, but but he gave me all those marvelous things and historic things and esoteric learning. Wow. Uh, Then, of course, uh, I went into Elizabeth Clare Prophet's uh, work, and I uh, was with her. I met her personally uh, several times and in some gatherings. My parents uh, in Colorado Springs would go to the Broadmoor, and uh, the family, she would be there with Mark and um, doing all her lectures, and my parents just loved her. And so I was brought up with that also. And then when Elizabeth came to California, then, of course, I brought my own family to see her in Los Angeles and in San Diego. And I am so, so proud that at one meeting that she dictated uh, from St. Germain that uh, 
afterward, she did uh, put the, the emerald crystal on my forehead and personally gave me an initiation, and I will always remember wow. that. That was in the um, uh, late 80s <laughs> in San Diego. But uh, we have been involved in the Rosicrucian movement and uh, so, so many others. Of course, we're at Theosophists. Um, Michael and I and my sons, I have two sons, uh, and we would go up to Altadena to the mansion and have lunch with Grace Kanoki, who was the president at that time of the American section of the Theosophical Movement. And Grace was a, a wonderful dear friend, and she gave me her personal phone number to <clears throat> put by my bedside if I ever needed her. <laughs> she was very sweet. and no, that was uh, very kind. She, uh, th- those were those were the early days. Uh, of course, Grace has passed on, and all our dear friends there, Kirby, Van Matter, and John, and all those people. But uh, we had some wonderful times and years with the Theosophical Movement up in Altadena. So your journey exposed you to many different uh, ways of approaching and understanding the divine. And now a current is starting to come through uh, both of you, something new and something very exciting and something that uh, uh, ties together many uh, traditions. And uh, for those who uh, haven't been following the unfolding tale here on Voice of Olympus, uh, what got my attention uh, was the intervention of Zeus. And uh, this happened synchronistically with uh, Michael and Diane and myself. And uh, I kept getting synchronicities for many, many days uh, where the same words, the same sentiments were being repeated over and over and over again. The association was made with Zeus. So I could not dismiss this. So I had to pay attention. And uh, I am very uh, excited as I learn more about the Urantia book. And uh, um, I start looking at my own path in a, in a new way. The learning curve is kind of slow, uh, but the more I learn, the more excited and interested uh, I become. So I, feel, I count myself very fortunate uh, to be part of this adventure, and uh, I'm learning a lot uh, as we take it together. Well, you are really exciting us because I, I had not really gotten into the Greek, um, I, I'm going to say mythology, that's not the correct word, but uh, that's fine. since I was really very young, and now we are just all immersed in it, and we just love it, and we, we, we see the... Um, the parallels, even with the Arantia book, and, and which got me to do the parallels between the Greek gods and the Greek, um, what I think are still um, uh, so so closely aligned to the ones that are in the Arantia book as Zeus and the local universe father and Hera as uh, the local universe mother and so forth. But I do want to mention, too, that my very first uh, guide, so to speak, or angel that appeared to me in 1985, was dressed in a Greek teton, was dressed as a Greek. Uh, Mark II uh, had the, the shoes, the, the dress, and uh, he led me then to, to find Michael. And when Michael was uh, in my meditations, he was always dressed as a Greek also. And so I think that this is something that uh, I had not really um, put a lot of emphasis on or really thought a lot about. But now it seems more important to me. And um, so I'm almost saying, well, am I drawing Greek gods when I'm drawing the Iran book gods? And it seems more and more like that. My personal quest has uh, led me to believe that uh, the gods or the powers or the celestials or however you wish to um, you know, label them, um, we understand them through many cultural guises and they communicate with us through these cultural uh, and subcultural uh, guises, but they're actually greater than our perceptions of them. So, um, I, and the ancients understood this as well. There are, they have lists of uh, how different uh, divinities are known in, in other cultures. And a lot of my personal journey uh, has been in playing hide-and-seek with Hercules, if you will, uh, as I've uh, studied him and found him in different uh, cultures. And it's very interesting um, to find them in this cosmic context because I've been finding them in uh, Unarius and the Mark Age revelations and several of the other um, individuals from different groups I've been working with. So 
uh, it seems that for me at least, they're trying to open my eyes to the fact that we're here too. <laughs> you know, we're not just in the mythical, mythological uh, spiritualities from antiquity, but we're very much alive in the in the cosmic mythologies. And in ancient times, they understood this as well. The original Theosophy that came out during the Hellenistic era between Alexander and uh, Cleopatra made it very yeah. clear that uh, the gods were celestials. Yes, um, I know Cleopatra. She she really felt that she was a reincarnation yes. of Isis, and she really would uh, 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 put on the the uh, um, what would you say attributes of that. But I, I honestly believe that she really did believe that, and that it was the truth. Um, you know, I've always been studying about Cleopatra since I was a little girl. Sixty nine B.C. She was born, and and her family and. Helios and all of her children and so forth, and and uh, I love the stories about her, but I really think she took on that that it uh, Greek and Egyptian uh, religion really believed in it. So, and Isis, yes. of course, in the, in the Rancher book is the uh, universal mother, you know, who uh, what you think is, or what I think is. I mean, what I am I am putting together. So, you know, and then, of course, uh, Cleopatra was totally Greek. I mean, we have to admit it. <laughs> yes. She was descended from Ptolemy, who was probably a half-brother of, of Alexander the Great, or at least a close relative. So, uh, it's all, so it's all, it all is just coming together, Hercules. It's just all coming together, all of the work that I've done and studies for all these years, and it just seems like it's just perfectly coming together. That's how I feel about my work as well. That finally, uh, as I approach sixty, it's all coming. It's all coming together <laughs> and making sense and uh, uh, becoming uh, clearer and clearer. Uh, yeah. So you guys have had uh, two recent uh, meetings since last time we uh, discussed this. Uh, would you care to share some of the things that you learned in those meetings? Yes. Uh, thank you, Hercules. So we. Uh you know, we, we come to the, the topic of, of tonight's uh, radio program here um, from, our, from our spiritual journeys and all of our studies from the past and our past experience. And we come to, we come to just to give a, a little bit of background here, um, to 2013, we, uh, we took on um, my, Diane's and my nephew's, and niece, uh, but 2013 was a pivotal yeah. was a pivotal moment uh, during that time. Uh, we were raising we were raising um, two boys and a girl, uh, and we started really getting a little bit more into our Urantia book studies at that time. Um, so this was starting about 10 years ago. Then in uh, 2013. Um, as you will notice, if you go to our um, if you go to our YouTube channel, we have a video on there that chronicles uh, Diane's encounter and her experience with uh, the local universe father and local universe mother. So in 2013, she was upstairs dusting her bureau drawers, and all of a sudden there was a split screen in her vision, uh, and she can probably tell you more about that, um, but it's also on the video. Um, and then up, appearing in her vision were, and actually in her experience, were the local universe father and local universe mother. These two are in the Urantia book, local universe father being a paradise son who comes, who is born in paradise and comes and creates, administers, upholds a local universe, which is comprised of approximately um, 10 million inhabitable planets. And then you have a local universe mother who is also uh, born in paradise, um, and she comes through the lineage of the infinite mother spirit or infinite spirit. They come together to create, uphold, and administer this local universe is local creation. So Diane encountered these two in this encounter and vision. And then sometime later, these two 
uh, said that they wanted to see our home, and this was during a meditation that Diane had where she saw them out uh, at our pool in our backyard. So they came into our home, and they came to inspect some of the rooms in our home. And I'm just painting a very broad picture here. Mm-hmm. And, from, and from that moment on, they said to us that we would like to have meetings with you on a monthly basis, on a regular basis. So since August of 2015, we have been having meetings with the local universe father and the local universe mother. And sometimes the infinite mother spirit, who is the what we're calling the female counterpart of the third person of Trinity, the infinite spirit, she also attends meetings. And in effect, she is kind of sponsoring this experiment or this project that, that's happening right now. Okay? So then, fast forward about a couple years here to 2017, we were told a number of months ago that Maitreya is now beginning a mission on the Earth to transform the planet. So we were just, we were kind of blown away with that because <clears throat> because with, from their information, they were linking Maitreya, the one in many, many, um, you know, spiritual traditions and religious traditions, was to be the world teacher to come, the new world teacher of the new Buddha. They were linking Maitreya with what we find in the Urantia book as the magisterial son, doing a magisterial mission. And this is what uh, Krem, Benjamin Krem has talked about, the Theosophists, the uh, Alice Bailey, Elizabeth Clare Prophet, and others, and the Buddhists, and Maitreya mm-hmm. Great Tao. They're all saying that, you know, they, they were all expecting the New World Teacher, the New Buddha. Well, we are told that he is here. Now, we had an interesting meeting on May 26th, uh, and I think probably Diane can tell you a little bit about that, just for a little variety of, uh, uh, you know, to have her tell you a little bit about that. Okay, that would be awesome. Okay. And, uh-huh. uh, sure. Diane, um, why don't you explain to the audience, too, how these uh, meetings are held? What exactly is meant uh, when you use the term uh, meeting? Well... Uh, I can give you an example of this one on the 26th, and then we'll give you the example of the one on the 28th. Um, The one on the 26th, it seemed to me that what they are trying to do, the father and the mother, the local universe father and mother, are trying to introduce to us the team of the magisterial mission of Maitreya. And so for the one on the 26th, that was a Friday of May 26th, just recently. And during the day, about 4 o'clock, I was inspired and kind of told to uh, start drawing a picture of the Universal Father. Now, I, I have been thinking about this for a long time, and I am working on one of the local Universe Father, but the, the Universal Father... And so at 4 o'clock in the afternoon, before the meeting, I started drawing just a pencil and a um, crayon drawing of the Universal Father. They told me that his hair was the color of, like, pure gold Mm -hmm. and that his eyes were a very deep, deep heavenly blue. Now, the Universal Father, his eyes are turquoise, bright turquoise, but the Universal Father's eyes... Yes, the local universe father's eyes are turquoise, but the universal father has deep blue eyes and a really gold hair, the really color of gold. And so I began drawing it, and Michael came home about six, and he was excited about it, so we started working with the computer with it. We, we do that. We put it on the computer and then uh, try and work out a frame and so forth for it. Well, that evening when the meeting came, um, The way that it was set up, we were facing toward the backyard of the home in a downstairs room that is actually a family room, but we used for a guest room. 
and in front of us, so if I was facing toward the back of the home, the father was standing to the left, to the right, excuse me, to the right. The mother was on my left, the left. On the father's side on the right, there were eight Melchizedek's that were on his side. And then on the left with the mother, there were the four Trinity teacher sons. And then in back of them were eight seraphim in back. Now, we learned that they were um, hovering and they do this often. Now, sometimes, now, when we talk about the meeting on the 28th, we had chairs set up, and we did that for them. But sometimes they will come, and they will hover, maybe only a foot above the ground. But this time, it was like about five feet up, and so they were almost touching the ceiling, because sometimes they are not full size. In fact, okay. sometimes, Hercules, I have to tell you, they're only about a foot high. I know this sounds strange, but this is the way it was. So this was the particular setup for the 26th. The father on the right, the mother on the left, as we were facing them, eight Melchizedek's on the right with the father's side, four Trinity teacher sons on the left with the mother, and then, as I said, the eight seraphim in back. Now, it's not always that way. Uh, Michael, do you want to? Yeah, uh, Hercules, usually the usual setup for the team meeting since August 2015 has been Diane and myself, usually with a combination of local universe father, local universe mother, sometimes the infinite mother spirit, sometimes it's just the infinite mother spirit, sometimes it's just the local universe father. It varies. But okay. This, but this particular... This particular uh, May 26th meeting was different than all of the meetings that we've had regarding um, the father and mother's messages, the 10-year plan, because the, the uh, magisterial mission began. So with this May 26th team meeting that we had just recently, um, this particular meeting and the one that we had on the 28th, the purpose for those meetings are a little different than the earlier meetings that we would have with the Father, Mother, Infinite Mother. Um, and their purpose is to introduce the team members, to introduce the main team members that are working right now on this Maitreya work, this, this magisterial mission. So as you can see from Diane's description of the beings that were present, the eight Melchizedeks, the eight Seraphim, the four Trinity teacher sons, the father and mother and us, that they're introducing us to the team. Now, uh, fast forward a couple days to May 28th, and interesting, a, a different setup. This is a different setup for this team meeting. They told us to set up six chairs in our upstairs great room. And the upstairs great room is where we usually have our team meetings. And we were perplexed at this. But as we went through the meeting, um, we found out that these six chairs were for the local universe father, local universe mother, and four Melchizedeks. Wow. You have a very rich and interactive uh, spiritual life. And uh, I've been along similar paths for much of my life. So to me, what you're saying is understandable because I've experienced such things uh, myself. But uh, to very many people who are not in tune with uh, the divine, however they choose uh, to see it or however it calls to them. So they don't have that type of personal relationship with, uh, with uh, cosmic uh, entities. So um, uh, it just struck me that to many people, it, it would probably sound unbelievable what you're saying. Well, I just want to say that I've been talking to the angels since I was a little girl, really, since I was mm -hmm. very young. So, yes, it is normal for me. And I, I do understand that it must be hard for others. But we do have visitations of Mary and of Archangel Michael and who knows who they are, whether they're Zeus and uh, 
uh, mm-hmm. era or what their names really are, but uh, people are having sightings of, of these uh, people appearing to them and asking them to pray. And we've had 2,000 sightings since in the last 2,000 years that are documented. Yes. So, you know, there, there are people that, that are uh, in believing uh, this. Uh, we have people that uh, half a million people go to Medjugorje or have been to Medjugorje and uh, Lourdes and, of course, Fatima. I told you it was the anniversary, you know, this year, mm-hmm. 1917 to 2017. So, um, but this was shocking to me, too, though, in on December the 20th, 19th and 20th, of 2013, uh, because I actually spoke and saw him while I was totally awake. So yes, it was shocking at first, and then uh, I went there. I didn't. Uh, I didn't do it of my own volition. They, they took me there to Wadsworth Mansions, where they were and where, where the father and mother were, with 40 others, and 10 were Melchizedek. So that was my first experience with Melchizedek. Was in 2013. So, uh, Michael, do you want to tell him a little bit about uh, why the 26th meeting was so important? Well, you know, um, Hercules, you're talking about, uh, you know, you're talking about a personal relationship with our unseen helpers, uh, and some of them are seen, some do see them. Um, mm-hmm. But, you know, the, when we had our team meetings, the, the, the post-2015 uh, meetings, with the father and mother, they told us at that time, they said that uh, they are closer to the earth than ever before in the history of the earth. And what they would like is they'd like us to pray for world peace. They'd like, but they'd also like to, um, to develop a closer personal relationship with each person. So one of our messages of the sixth revelation is also, look, the Father and the Mother and the Infinite Mother and all the Celestials are close. Talk with them, you know, dialogue with them, find out what they want, develop the lifestyle and the purity of heart and the purity of lifestyle, of body, mind, and spirit, and soul, to be able to connect with them and have that, those channels open and dialogue with them. And, and going back to this May 26th meeting that we had with the... Um, with all of these celestial friends, the Melchizedeks and the Seraphim and Trinity teacher sons and father and mother, one of the one of the main messages of, the main of that meeting was pray to the Universal Father and ask for his continued support in world peace and transforming our world. And that was the main message for that meeting, and we were blown away because, you know, we're, we're getting the idea that, that yes, the local universe father and local universe mother are closer to the earth than they've ever been, but the concept of the universal father being involved and being, I mean, you know, of course we know that, we know, of course, that God is always involved in our lives, of course, but this is a, this is the first uh, being of the Trinity, this Universal Father, according to your Rancher Book teachings, and it would seem that this this uh, celestial personage, this this God, would be so far above, but yet he he has said through the local universe Father and Mother that he's interested in the Earth at this time, and the transformation that will be taking place because of the magisterial mission and the work that all these beings are doing. And uh, it it is very interesting that uh, specific uh, requests have been made of humanity uh, and uh, instructions given as to what uh, people can do to uh, uh, connect with the celestials and assist in this uh, process. Yes, and they're very last, simple. Uh, the are very yeah, simple. Yeah, they're very beginning. simple. This last meeting was to add the request that we also pray to the Universal Father every night. Now we've been praying for world peace every night, but they want us to include the Universal Father now every night, and so that's an addition. We we thank the Mother for the blessings. We thank the Father, local Universe Father, for our life. But now they want us to include 
the Universal Father, and to thank him also and pray for world peace and ask him for help in that. Now, now what is the relation of the Universal Father with the local Universe Father? Um, are they different uh, uh, entities? Is one a higher aspect of the other? Yes. Um, in the Urantia book, the Universal Father is kind of, well, the Universal Father is the first person of the Trinity. Um, there's an I Am concept uh, in the Urantia book, which I think parallels perfectly with theosophy, with the immutable, uh, eternal essence of all that is, was, is, and will be. <laughs> but there's an <laughs> I Am, there's an I Am that manifests seven aspects of itself, the personal, the personal aspect of this, what is called the first source and center, the first of these seven manifestations of the I Am, this first source and center, the personalization of that first source and center is the Universal Father, who happens to be, um, for sake of, you know, mortal comprehension, the first... Uh, the first God, the primal God, that's the Universal Father. Now, there are many, many levels of reality, or many, many levels of finite reality. You mm -hmm. step down step down a number of levels uh, from the Paradise Father, who is this Universal Father. You step down to Super Universe Fathers, then to... Uh, other fathers that are a little bit lower in, I don't know, I guess in perfection, in levels of perfection, God perfection. So you get to the local universe, which is about 10 million inhabitable planets. And we're saying that, and the Urantia book is saying that that is where the local universe father is. So local universe father and local universe mother are more approachable as gods, or closer in proximity as God's than is the universal father who seems who seems very, very lofty and high up. Yes, um, I might mention, too, that uh, we're going to get into uh, explaining what these Melchizedek's told us in this meeting of the 28th. We had them in these six chairs, and one of the uh, Melchizedek's, Michael, asked him, he said, well, can you, do you talk to the Universal Father? And he said, no. And, but we said, well, do you communicate with him? And he said, well, of course. But he communicates with messages through the, either the Infinite Mother or the Local Universe Mother or Father. Uh, he cannot talk directly to him. He is just so, I guess, just so far away or, or whatever. I don't know what the proper words would be. But, but then messages are relayed to him uh, through the universal father and mother to the Melchizedek, and they do communicate to him regularly, but they cannot talk to him directly. Now, a lot so, of people... So far, so far away. A lot of people who are not, uh, quote-unquote, I guess, uh, religious or, uh, quote-unquote, uh, uh, spiritual uh, actively, um, they feel that if there is a divinity, the divinity has forsaken humanity. But uh, folks that are uh, spiritual and involved with uh, um, hierarchy, uh, regardless of how they understand it, tell us that, no, the hierarchy is not only present, but it cares about humanity and is very much involved in uh, human affairs. And that's also true in the Urantia book and in the Sixth Revelation. Is that correct? Oh, absolutely. Uh, this was something that we were told by the Father at the very end of the meeting on the 28th. We said, well, what is the purpose, you know, of your being here? And that is exactly what he said. He said that we want people to know that we love and care about them and that we want to give them hope, that there is hope, and that we will do the very best that we can to bring them hope for a better a better world and a more peaceful and happy life. 
they want us to know they really love us and do care about us. According yeah. to the sixth revelation, um, how did humanity's present uh, situation come about? How did uh, uh, is this a uh, a planet or plane where we're enmeshed or entrapped or imprisoned, or is it a schoolroom where we where we learn? Is it a combination of uh, of all of these things? Well. Uh the, the indications that we are getting from our meetings with them and from general information that, that we're receiving is that there are many purposes for this earth um, and that there have, been, there have been many plans that have been developed for this earth. Uh, and we're told that currently we're on plan E, <laughs> okay. <laughs> we passed oh, the plan nine. <laughs> now we're plan E. <laughs> uh, so plan E. Um, I'm going to be putting out a paper uh, soon on plan E uh, that goes into a little bit more detail. I'm looking forward but to Di- reading it. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Diane wanted to say something. I, I just wanted to mention that according to the Arantia book, our planet, our world, is an experimental world. And the Infinite Mother Spirit, she has been the one who has been sponsoring us in this. And this was a real experiment. Our, our life, the fact that we were brought together under very unusual circumstances, um, Michael was brought in the home when I, when I was going through a lot of emotional turmoil. My, my first husband was dying of cancer. Mm. <laughs> it was a very difficult time. And um, Mark, too, uh, brought Michael in as a, a young man of 15 years old and, and uh, was in the home for many, many years. And then finally we actually met in the flesh. And so this was an experiment, and we were under her uh, supervision. So it is an experimental planet altogether, the whole thing. Yeah, yeah in the Rancho book, uh, it describes, you know, in general terms, uh, because as we know uh, from the Rancho book itself, it says that uh, no revelation is complete this side of attaining the Father in Paradise. But generally, uh, every tenth planet in a local universe, and we're in the local universe of Nebadon. Every tenth planet is an experimental planet, but it, it kind of goes, you know, through the same processes. And and the uh, the uh, paradise plan or the paradise matrix, you know, is in, imbued in every level of creation. But they experiment a little bit with experimental planets, and this is supposedly an experimental planet. To begin with. Um, to begin with. <laughs> and they've tried, they've tried some experimentation and things. Um, but there was a point at which uh, the, I guess, Plan D wasn't quite working out. <laughs> so, so we're on Plan E. But just to tell you that the Earth, the plan for the Earth that we're being told is a wonderful, wonderful plan. Um, and these Melchizedeks and these Seraphim and these Archangels, and the Trinity Teacher Sons, uh, Maitreya and the Magisterial Mission, are working together on this project, on Plan E, to make this world into an absolutely fantastic, wonderful place, kind of like almost like a temple that is worthy of uh, the Father's, the Universal Father's highest worship. It'll be a gem. It'll be a gem yes, in the a universe. Beacon, a beacon of light to give inspiration to the others, to the other worlds that exist. So uh, we're hoping that that will, will happen. Um, uh, but, Michael, tell them a little bit about uh, the, okay. what happened here at this last meeting. Okay. It's very interesting. So we, so we just wanted to kind of, um, you know, move on with um, how this transformation will take place this earthly transformation and it's being done by this team uh, and the purpose of the May 26th meeting and now this May 28th meeting that we'll get into a little bit uh, the purpose is for Diane and myself 
and eventually others, to come to um, f be familiar with the main team that will be working out this earthly transformation. On May 28th, we met with the four Melchizedeks and the local universe father and the local universe mother. And hence, the title of this particular radio program that we, we, we offered was called Meeting with the Melchizedeks. <laughs> so mm. this, this meeting on the 28th was very interesting. We were all set up in kind of a, a semicircle of sorts. Diana and I were facing, um, we were in the great room where we usually have most of our team meetings. We were facing northeast, Diana and I together sitting together. There were six chairs that they told us to set up, as I mentioned earlier. Diane was to my left. To Diane's left, there was a Melchizedek. Oh, no, there was the uh, local okay. universe mother, excuse me. To Diane's left, local universe mother. In our King Tut throne chair was the first, the first Melchizedek, male. male Melchizedek. In the chair to the left of the King Tut chair was a female Melchizedek. And we were blown away because, you know, everything pretty much in the Urantia book is, is, you know, from a patriarchal point of view. So, you know, a female Melchizedek kind of blew us away. But so, female Melchizedek, and then next to the female Melchizedek to the left in, uh, would be the local universe father there. To the left of him, uh, a male Melchizedek, and to the left of that male Melchizedek, another Melchizedek. So we have the four Melchizedeks there, Diane and myself. And as the meeting went on, we asked them questions, and the father and the mother and the Melchizedeks explained to us and told us a little bit about themselves and a little bit about what they would be doing. So they kind of introduced our, introduced themselves to us, and we got to know them, and it was a really fantastic experience. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, I know that I asked them first if they were happy because they were moving into a, uh, a condo in Irvine, uh, the four mm -hmm. Melchizedek, they are incarnated into human bodies, just like the magisterial son. The magisterial son has been in a human body probably uh, at least by 1977 when uh, Krem said that he uh, actually took a plane to London, England, and began working in the uh, Asian district in London. But he has come now to America, and the four Melchizedeks that we talked to um, the first one was a male, and we asked them if they were happy. Well, I, I, I thought they would say so because this is a very uh, prosperous, happy area, Southern California, Orange County, well run and peaceful and secure. But, of course, they are not happy. And that was their first comment because there are too many um, people in the world that are suffering. Um, I know I just uh, went through quite an ordeal today with uh, some of my friends at my son's school because uh, about 10 days ago there were 28 people that were um, killed in uh, Egypt, uh, near Menia, in Upper Egypt, uh, cryptic, um, Coptic uh, Christians. 28 of them, and uh, my this family at our school was re very distraught. This one hurt them more than anything because um, the, uh, they, they were intercepted going to a monastery and uh, stopped, and they were told that if they didn't uh, say they would convert, they would be killed. Well, some of them said they would convert, but they killed them anyway, and so... Um, uh, our friends were very distraught because this was very close to where their family lived, and uh, mm -hmm. it was a very uh, frightening thing for them. So um, the Melchizedeks were very um, despondent about the condition and suffering in so many parts of our world right now. So this first Why Melchizedek... Uh-huh. Yes? Seems to be yeah, go, go ahead, Hercules. Please. The hate seems to be increasing... Uh, 
um, at least in my uh, half century plus on this planet, uh, I seem to be seeing an increase uh, in uh, uh, hate uh, that is surrounding yes. us. Yes, yes. And uh, this first Melchizedek um, was one who is going to be working with social, though, not the world peace. Um, we asked all four of them what their major uh, uh, plan was and what their major department of help was, and the first one was uh, on social issues. So he said he was not really working in world peace as much as the other three. Um, the second one, who was our female Melchizedek, who had sat next to him, uh, she said that she was going to be working for world peace, but she was going to be staying mostly in the L.A. area and working through um, uh, inspiring people as far as um, politicians and so forth in uh, Los Angeles and, and in California and the United States, and that uh, working to inspire and give ideas to the president and uh, other politicians on ideas to uh, help with world peace in the rest of the world and in our own country to bring about safety, more safety, uh, in the future. But but mainly um, but mainly in the United but States. But mainly she said. in the United States, she said, particularly. Okay. Um, our third our third Melchizedek, um, he was an international an international um, uh, Melchizedek working for uh, the Department of mostly the Middle, Middle East, he said. He would be mainly working in the Middle East. Uh, all four of these have incarnated into Caucasian bodies, not okay. like the magisterial son who is the um, Hispanic body, but they are all four Caucasian. Our fourth Melchizedek, um, the last one, did not really um, give us too much information, but we found out that from him that he would be working as far as the resources of the world and uh, helping to redistribute some of the resources to those that maybe are deficit in that area. So his was actually, um, he said that his uh, department was really almost in working to get funds for some of these areas in the world that, that need it so badly to be able to distribute and redistribute uh, funds, funds and uh, help those who are uh, really suffering in now, that area. So, uh -huh. why, do the, um, why do the powers incarnate in uh, human bodies? Cause, because they do. They do in every spirituality and every uh, um, religion. Um, what is the reason given in the Urantia book or in the Sixth Revelation uh, for why can't they direct things from uh, the invisible? Why must they descend into the visible to, to take a hand? Well, this is going to be interesting because um, on June the 8th, which is this Thursday, is our next meeting, and it's also our next pray, pray uh, date for world peace. And it will be at 10 p.m. on June the 8th, which is Thursday. And we are told that this meeting will be only with the Infinite Mother Spirit, but it will be with four Melchizedek that are part of the team of the Magisterial Son. But these four are not going to incarnate, and they will be doing work, as you say, being invisible. Uh, so what we have here are four of the eight Melchizedek are incarnating, and four are not. Now, I'm not saying that that is the limit of the group because it, it looks to me, from what they're telling me, that by the time this 50-year-old uh, mission is completed, that more than a uh, million, a million uh, angels and celestial helpers will be involved. But I, I can tell you uh, also uh, with the Urantia book, uh, there's an example of... Um, Machiaventa Melchizedek, who's, who's one of the Melchizedeks, uh, Machiaventa Melchizedek uh, incarnating on our planet as a result of the, you know, the um, default of Adam and Eve. I guess uh, he needed to come to the planet in a, a body, in a human adult body, to intervene, I guess, in a 
in a major way to try and get things back on track. Um, that's an example from the Urantia book, uh, and it seems like maybe maybe some of these Melchizedeks, and this is just conjecture because this is just something that has just begun unfolding to us in the last couple months. Um, it seems to me like maybe these mm, these Melchizedeks and the magisterial son that are incarnating are maybe going to work really on a really material level with uh, influential people on the planet and with the planet itself, people on the planet. It seems like maybe uh, they will they will do that. Yes, uh, I wanted to mention too that our fourth. Melchizedek, who was the gentleman on the very far uh, right and sitting next to Michael, um, he was saying that the magisterial son, that he is, um, he is not a sweet, you know, now the local universe father is so sweet and so beautiful and so loving and so kind, um, but he is not a sweet uh, personality or demeanor, that he is more powerful, more strong, more business-like, more um, no, no nonsense, and more down to earth, and that this is the persona that he is giving out in his physical body. Um, he is going to both uh, areas that these people, I'm saying people now because they are in human bodies, are living. They are living in two condos in Irvine, supposedly, the four teacher Trinity sons and then the four Melchizedek's. The, uh, each group incarnated into human bodies, and he will, uh, you know, live mostly in uh, the one with the teacher uh, sons. But he will be his presence will be felt in both groups. But he does eat. We we did find out that. Uh, in fact, Michael and I had a real joke because they said they actually have Chinese takeout. They do not they cook. They do it. not buy food themselves. They have it ordered in. Uh, they do not drive. They have a driver. They have a housekeeper in both locations. Um, the, mal- the magisterial son's presence is felt in both both areas. Uh, he is all over. He's never really hardly ever there with them uh, continually. He is so busy all over the world, you know. <laughs> I'm sure he has a lot to and, do. <laughs> and in the but sixth it was revelation, funny how we, we actually got a real feeling of becoming uh, familiar with these, these Melchizedeks. And the sixth revelation brings us full circle back to uh, the relaunch of uh, Theosophy by Helena Petrovna Blavatsky because uh, the masters that she worked with for the most part, and this includes Mori and Kutumi, uh, were incarnate at the time. Yes, yes. Now, St. Germain, he incarnated. I mean, my goodness, you know, we all know of the stories uh, that uh, uh, pertain to him. Mm-hmm. And Godfrey Ray King, and, and so so many. But but this particular magisterial mission is so important to the world. This is such an important phase that uh, it, it's really going to take um, all of them um, uh, getting down to the nuts and bolts of, of uh, hard work out out here in the world. And, and, and they're uh, they're going to do it in human bodies. Some of these uh, entities. And I'm looking forward to uh, this uh, um, mission unfolding. Uh, will you guys be in touch with uh, their physical incarnations? Uh, will they make themselves known to you once they're in place? Um, we are hoping they will. We are promised that the magisterial son will visit our home, but probably uh, Matreya uh, will not come uh, right away. As, as you notice, these first two meetings, he's not coming. It's his first, uh, first is the four Melchizedeks that are incarnated, and then now next, uh, this Thursday, it will be the ones that are not incarnated, but they are all living together. The eight Melchizedeks are living together. Um, we are told that the uh, teacher Trinity sons are in human bodies, Caucasian bodies, the four Melchizedek are in human bodies, and it is a very real possibility that we may be able to see them, and I am hoping that we will. Um, right now, we're, we're becoming familiar with them. We're talking, and 
we actually, like I say, with the Chinese takeout, we were actually joking with the Melchizedek. I mean, this was really an unusual experience. When I first uh, was involved with these visions, I was very, very nervous and and afraid and this kind of thing. But now uh, they have become so familiar and, and they're so easy to work with that it's a joy. Wow. <laughs> a lot of interesting things going on. Uh, we're <laughs> running close to uh, the end of the segment, so to make sure that folks can uh, uh, learn more about you, why don't you share the information, and then we'll keep going until the, the other Argonauts come on board, and then we'll uh, switch the attention to them. So how can folks learn more about uh, you and what you're doing? Okay, well, uh, thank you again, Hercules, so much. Uh, this this uh, radio program is offering us uh, uh, a real opportunity to share some of these ideas, and hopefully it will uh, it will help everyone else on our planet. So appreciate that so much. Um, My pleasure. We have thanks, thanks Hercules. Um, so you can contact me. Um, at, I have a personal email. It's m i c h a e l d u n k i n, the number one at hotmail dot com. It's Michael Duncan one at hotmail dot com, d u n k i n. Um, but we also have a YouTube channel. Uh, it's my name, Michael Duncan. Again, M I C H A E L D U N K I N. We have two team meetings, two recorded team meetings on that YouTube channel, and we also have a description of Diane's encounter in 2013. Like I said earlier. Um, we are on your website. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> thank, thank you for offering us some space. You're welcome. And as, thanks. And uh, we have, and you have been so gracious to announce our worldwide prayer circle for world peace times. The next one, uh, as Diane mentioned, is going to be on uh, Thursday, June 8th at 10 o'clock p.m. That specific time. Anywhere you are in the world, say a prayer for world peace. And I just wanted to mention, Hercules, that um, if anyone's interested uh, in exploring the Urantia book, there are two websites where you can download it for free or view it for free, the Urantia book. Uh, one of them is a fellowship, Urantia book fellowship website. It's, it's um, what is it? It's urantiabook.org. That's urantiabook.org, and it's U A. U-R-A-N-T-I-A, urantiabook.org. And then there's also a foundation, Urantia Book Foundation website. It's truthbook.org, truthbook, T-R-U-T-H, uh, book.com or .org. I think it's dot, .truthbook.com, .org. So uh, you can download, download it for free. Um, other than that, I guess just join us on June 10th, I mean June 8th at 10 p.m. wherever you are in the world. And you're also hosting a, an event uh, this weekend, this coming weekend, which is an interfaith uh, event at your home. Thank you for mentioning that. Yes, we are true interfaith Argonauts, Hercules. <laughs> yes, you are. I'm very <laughs> active. Uh, I'm, I'm greatly honored. We are hosting a... Um, we're hosting a Tao master, a master from Maitreya Great Tao. He has a holy house in Temple City, Rosemead, uh, near Los Angeles. He is part of the Taiwan lineage of Maitreya Great Tao. He will be coming to visit uh, our home. And we have a representative from a prominent Maitreya Great Tao temple near the Los Angeles area. She will be coming with this master to visit um, and we will have uh, a couple of longtime Urantia book readers also. And, of course, Diane and I have been in many interfaith situations with yes. our studies. But we're hosting an event here, kind of like an interfaith exchange, to share ideas and learn how we can work together better. Very, very that, awesome. Yes. Yeah. Oh, and that will, be, that will be this coming Sunday, June 11th, at 3 p.m. Pacific at our home in Mission Viejo. And anyone who's in the area, 
is welcome to come. And you can email me at that email address I gave you and RSVP, and we'll have refreshments too. <laughs> Very cool. You can't. You cannot uh, beat that. <laughs> And uh, I, I must say that over the years, I've uh, I've gotten some Urantia book materials, including uh, the Urantia book a couple of times. Uh, and until we started interacting, um, they had been somewhere in storage. And after we started oh, interacting, yeah. they all started popping up. So now I have two copies of the Urantia book. I have uh, several Urantia book-related books. So I have a whole library. Um, <laughs> and uh, so, again, it's a learning curve. Uh, but uh, it, it's it's uh, again attacking the tower of uh, Babel, getting rid of the terminology that uh, uh, boxes us and prevents us from seeing uh, that our, our spiritualities are pointing toward the same light. Yes, and and the Urantia book has some pretty good terms. You know, they're, they're Western terms, um, and the Urantia book is laid out pretty clearly, and they use some really good terms for like uh, deity and divinity and God, and they kind of explain that a little bit, and the different levels of reality, like supreme, ultimate, and absolute. There's some pretty good Western terminology there, and if you look really carefully and, and do some um, do some study, you'll find that the concepts, like you say, you know, the concepts are all the same. It's the ancient wisdom and a new guise. Um, but this is a good presentation, the Urantia book, and we're working out of the Urantia book for the most part for this magisterial mission of Maitreya and the messages of the local universe father and mother. And the goal Where? for our father for this planet, for this world, and we have recently been given more information about that that we'd love to share at some time. Th that would be awesome. And uh, you're on again, I believe, in two weeks, so we can uh, yes. continue uh, in that one. Um, because my background is mostly in uh, uh, mythic spirituality, theosophy, and theurgy, uh, those are the main areas where I'm coming from, uh, the um, Davic uh, kingdoms, can they be found also in the uh, Urantia book? I know that the angels and uh, some of the human hierarchies and planetary um, and uh, cosmic hierarchies are very well uh, represented in the book, but are the nature spirits uh, um, mentioned or focused upon? You know, I think that that is uh, something that is neglected a little bit. Uh, in other words, we almost feel that in a way the Arantia book is a book of generalities. Okay. And a lot of that is is omitted. It is omitted. Uh, so I think that is why that we then pick up our uh, theosophy books and uh, and Paramahansa Yogananda. <laughs> I, have to, I have to bring up his name because I do dearly love his divine romance and some of his books too, to uh, to round out some of those um, things that are that are omitted. Um, again, and two, and the globes, uh, which theosophy goes into, and the rounds and so forth, you know, are, are mostly expressed as first mansion world, second mansion world, third mansion world, fourth mansion world, and so forth. So, the, uh, you know, but if you, if you try and parallel the um, terms from the Rancher book with some of that, th then you do find the Rancher book does have it. But a lot of people don't realize it because the terms are different. But but she's and right, though. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. I think there's a journey we can uh, take together, and we can explore that uh, with me as uh, the uh, student who's uh, stumbling through this, and you guys as uh, uh, the folks who already know it. Um, I think oh, we can answer oh. a lot of those questions. <laughs> <We're>, <laughs> we are learning every day as we go. <laughs> um, but I think the exploration would be interesting uh, for us to explore that in future shows. Thank you, Michael Thank and Diane. So it's always a pleasure to have you on, and uh, I'm looking forward to having you back on again in a couple of weeks. Well, thank right, you thanks. so much. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you. You, you too. Many blessings. Blessings. for listening to the Spiritual Unity Radio Network. Join us seven nights a week for exciting programming covering a variety of expressions of faith. And remember, 
all manifestations of the divine are equally valid.